Hey everybody, a lot of questions have accumulated, so I decided to answer them. I uh, hope you enjoy, and keep sending more. As ridiculous as it may sound, I miss doing them. Dear Doc Brown, I understand you have traveled quite extensively in your time machines. Have you ever met John Wayne or Jimmy Stewart? Thanks, writes Lex from New York, New York. Amazing! New York within New York. Uh, anyway, John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart. Well, I figured I have a time machine. Last thing I want to do is meet a stupid celebrity, right? Oh, I don't run into any of those. Oh, no. What I like to do, I like to travel into the past, and I do things that other people didn't get to do back then unless they knew about it in the future. So, let me give you an example. I would go into the past, and I'd hunt polar bears. Oh, I'd hunt a bunch, uh, because later on, you know, they get extinct, you know. Of a, oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> I didn't say they're extinct. No, they're endangered now. Right, nothing uh, happens to them in the, uh, in the future. Anyway, I do a whole bunch of things like that. I got great big fur coats, but then, you know, after doing that, I felt kind of bad. So I went to back to my laboratory, and I cloned a few polar bears. And so I didn't, I didn't ruin the space-time continuum. Don't worry, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I practice what I preach. And, uh, but if there's one thing I, I, I enjoy most about time travel, it's the fact that when I get back home to my own time, I really, really appreciate it. Because you go and you say, I'm glad I didn't live back then. I'm glad I don't live there in the future. Come back, nice couch, sipping on your martini, and you can just think and ponder and read history books and say to yourself, Isaac Newton was a schmuck. Dear Dylan Murren, your hair is, is crazy. Why, why do you have it like that? Right, Francine from Ireland. Well... Francine, I'm glad you're Irish because if you weren't Irish, I probably wouldn't answer your question. My hair is is crazy because I don't I don't have time to 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 groom myself. I I I, I do have nice hair and I I like moving it around and 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 it it kind of gets in in the way of things sometimes, especially when 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 you try to light a cigarette. Like you have you have a lighter, and and you say to yourself, I, I want to light something, and you go uh, you go for a smoke and you go, yeah right it's nice, and then you burn your hair. Oh my God, I actually did, that was crazy. Gaboa writes, dear Emperor Palpatine, what is the quickest and easiest way to get filthy rich? <laughs> I suggest purchasing Donald Trump's book. He has many techniques and quick anecdotes to accelerate you towards a financially successful future. Start a business selling waffles at your local farmer's market. And if you are unsuccessful, then you can sell something off eBay. I don't know. Be original. That's the key, my young friend. Don't try to imitate others doing impressions of what works. Dear Peter O'Toole, how does one go about making a paper aeroplane? Writes Kina from Toronto. Well, Kina, thank you very much for your question, because I know I am an expert on the field. First, you need paper. Paper is very good, because without paper, it would just be an aeroplane not a paper aeroplane. Now what you do 
is you take the paper, put it horizontally, fold it in half, then you flip it on a 45 degree angle, fold it again, continue folding until you keep going, and there you go. A very nice, beautiful aeroplane folded simply by using your mind. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go home and sleep on your hammock. Dear Mad Hatter, will you buy me and my friend beer for his unbirthday? writes Vincent. Well, Vincent, I don't even know how old you are. In order to have beer for unbirthday, you must be uh, 7,644 unbirthday years old. Well, are you? I didn't think so. No beer. Sorry. Dear Christopher Walken, Yesterday I saw an Asian man with really long hair. Why can't I pull that off? Besides the fact that I'm not Asian. From Brian in Medford. Well, Brian, maybe you're pulling it off. Too much? You grow your hair, then you pull it off. What I do is I pull... Just enough to give extensions. Well, we don't want to pull it all off, do we? Go read some books. Use a brush. Do your own research. Don't depend on celebrities. Dear Professor Snape, what is the funniest prank you've ever pulled on Harry Potter? Writes Artemis from Perth and Kinross, Scotland. I don't pull pranks on people, nor do I encourage the use of humour in my classroom or on the grounds. I don't have a sense of humour. I only like potions and dark magic. Though there was this one time I have to say, Ron Weasley and I had a bit too much potion to drink, if you know what I mean. And we... We gave Harry Potter a chest waxing, but it was an opposite effect. It increased the speedy process of his chest hair rather than ripping it off. He awoke a man and was chased by Professor McGonagall. Dear Pat Butrum, what do you look for in a woman? What female celebrity or character would be your ideal romantic partner? Wes Goble? Beach Grove, Indiana. Well, I don't know. I mean, I look... What I look for in a woman is a real woman. You can be easily deceived nowadays. I mean, e even me, I, I could pass off as a woman if I want to. All I'd have to do is shave real close, put on pretty makeup, and, oh boy, I'm more beautiful than Mariah Carey. On a good day. But uh, if I had to pick a celebrity to, uh, to be with, I would probably choose Barbara Streisand. Now I know what you're thinking. Barbara Streisand is not the most ideal woman, but look at her character. She may have a big nose, but she knows it. Ha, ha, ha. See, that's funny. I find that funny. That's why I picked Barbara Streisand. Plus, she probably makes some good matzo ball soup. Dear Albert Finney, what is the best way to raise a little boy? Writes Henrietta. The best way to raise a boy is to call him son. You don't, you don't call him by his first name, just call him son, 
You say, come here, boy. Sit on my lap. I will tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story right now, boy. You better listen good. And then you, you scare him. You scare him straight out. You tell him right away. You tell him, you say, boy, you look out. Because one day you get in trouble, and then that's the end of it. I'll throw you on the street. You can live with the snails and the ants. Good luck. That's the way to raise a boy. Now, if you raise a girl, you do the complete opposite. You call her by her first name, and you say, darling, you're beautiful. If you want ice cream, sure, go ahead. And if she gets fat, too bad, because that's her mother's fault, not mine. Be sure to subscribe. More chances that your answer will be questioned. The question will be answered. Darn it.